how are you? Here we are again. We're putting on another show. We brought to you the original, the greatest, the best, the main cast of Sailor <laughs> Moon. We have them all here. We're excited to get you guys going and talk to you. How is everybody? Great. Oh, we're great. Awesome. <laughs> Doing good. They're all here and they're all excited because it's really late up in Toronto and they wanted to make sure they got this before bedtime. And it's cold too. <laughs> I am going to hand this over to my good friend Ian right here from Geektainment. Hello, He's going to take over and run this panel because he knows this show much better than me. And you'll all make fun of me because I'll pronounce stuff wrong anyway. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. thanks. We, uh, we really appreciate you coming and joining and uh, hopping on and doing this. We know the fans are going to absolutely love it. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I used to, I was talking to my buddy and I told him I was moderating this panel and, and he goes, did you ever watch something? I'm like, every day actually. I'd come home from school and it would be, it'd be on Toonami right before Dragon Ball Z. Aww. And it's still to this day, that theme song gets stuck in your head. Like, yeah really easily in the um, best possible way oh yeah. in the best possible way it's not like there's that song from holes i don't know if you've ever seen that movie but yeah. there's this dig it up up bomb day i haven't seen why that movie in about that? 20 why would you so i apologize I, I know how feverish <laughs> it is it gets stuck there uh but uh so you know the anniversary of the show is coming up and and really this is for everybody your characters have stood the test of time how does it feel to be a part of something that's generations and decades later still talked about and loved by many people it's amazing it's absolutely amazing. Um, it's like a passport to happiness because if, I, if I'm anywhere in the store, you name it, and I happen to possibly mention Sailor Moon <laughs> and the fact that I'm Luna, I mean, people change in front of me. They up to, and they go bananas. Like ordinary people who don't look emotional go, <laughs> just get <laughs> so excited. And then I get excited and then they make my day. So yeah. it's amazing we got paid for this. Yeah, you got paid? <laughs> well, like, I mean, crazy. <laughs> the irony of cartoons is you do it and it's never hot when you're doing it, but five, 10, 20 years later, um, it becomes um, you know, a phenomenon if you're lucky enough. And I think we did the first show uh, at the 20th anniversary in, in, in Vancouver, and we couldn't believe our eyes. Something we did 20 years ago in a studio in Toronto late at night uh, became this phenomenon uh, that um, the fans just came out in droves and it's just mm -hmm. getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So we all pinch ourselves when we're at cons yeah. or, or, or meeting fans. That's something we did, I don't know if it was a 30 years ago now, is uh, still, uh, uh, still making an impact on all the fans. It's, uh, it's fabulous. Did you know it was late at night? night? After what? midnight. <laughs> I don't recall that. <laughs> I think and it's not just that they, they love the show. They they also they there's as Jill said that emotional thing that connection to what those characters represented to them. That yeah. having that connection with people is just so it's so moving. It's so powerful. Yeah, yeah, totally. The other weird thing about it is though is maybe it's because we're Canadian. It, it's it's hard to just spew out oh by the way i'm sailor moon oh by the way oh i was in that show oh you like that show so it, one of the funny things that's happened of late was katie gave me um a mask for covid sailor that had sailor moon on it mm -hmm. and that is the new yeah. speaking point now if i wear that mask and people are like oh my god oh my god i love that show so much i'm like actually <laughs> sailor mars gave this to me and they're like you know sailor mars and i'm like yeah because I'm, I'm i'm sailor moon yeah <laughs> It's funny too because as soon as I got a bunch of masks, a bunch of Sailor Moon masks, but as soon as I bought that one for you, then I got a bunch for me. My mom wanted one. So my mom wears her Sailor Moon mask everywhere because people stop her. Oh, oh I love your mask. <laughs> really? Did you like Fantastic. the show? Oh, it was Sailor Mars. My daughter. <laughs> yeah. I noticed that she got the Sailor Moon mask. I know she really should have gotten the tuxedo. Mask. Uh, she didn't. Uh, she just right for picking. I uh, just wear like a cummer bun around my face. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, and that's like the new fashion statement is the masks. I got to. I had a space balls the face mask at the very beginning of this thing. You got to you know accessorize now. Ian, you're gonna need a Sailor Moon mask. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'll, maybe I'll get one of those uh, tuxedo masks. Masks. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Well, really? you know, it's... Oh, look at her. She's got it. Oh ready. wow. Oh, she's got it. There's a whole box of them. We're, Ooh, Aiden, we're, we're on a computer. You don't need it. Where are they? Wow. Oh, cool. oh, yeah. oh, that's, oh, that's very cool. Very cool. So 
said, you know, you guys did this however long ago, and they're still making stuff that people are wearing. And, you know, I mean, people mm -hmm. cosplay as Sailor Moon and Sailor Jupiter and Sailor Venus and all the different, you know, Sailor Squad people. And the guys, you know, cosplay as a tuxedo mask, and it's still very prevalent at cons. I, I bought socks the other day that had Artemis and myself on them. I oh, oh, that's cool. Nice. I just, she said, oh, can I have, I said, well, yes, you can. I definitely want those socks. And she said, oh, they, I said, because I'm on them. And anyway, um, <laughs> so again, I had this wonderful girl sort of dripping in front of, I mean, you know, blah, blah, um, and it was wonderful. And uh, I also <laughs> wore my, my Sailor Moon stockings that, that only have Luna high up the leg to an audition. And I ended up showing the person I was auditioning for my thighs. It wasn't necessarily a good idea. <laughs> you got Dear. the part. Ah, 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 no. a, a very no. different part. One of them. <laughs> yes. So, oh, Linda, Linda what, what was the strangest thing that anybody ever gave you? Someone gave me a tuxedo mask fork. Oh, <laughs> I, that's fantastic. Wow. I don't know what to do with that. Awesome. I mean, I know how to use a fork. You eat with a fork. Yeah, a that's a good answer. Occasion. There's yeah. so much stuff out there, and, and it keeps, there's more and more and more, and they keep making more and more. The weirdest probably thing that I actually had to sign for someone was um, Sailor Moon sanitary napkins. Oh dear. Oh, shut up. Oh, oh you don't God. Say. They really do that. that. Okay. They were not used, they were in the package. I would hope so. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, I guess that's that's a good question to ask anybody. What's the weirdest thing you guys have came across having that's to sign? Good. Uh, mostly bodies are the weirdest ones. Bodies. Yeah. The body yeah. parts. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes um, you know, it gets hot at, at Comic Cons and and sweaty. the pen won't write because the body's a little sweaty. <laughs> mm. So it's kind of and, and you, you kind of feel like you're poisoning somebody with your own signature because you know you're using a you know something that's kind of chemically. Well it sure smells chemically, and it you just watch it sinking into the pores and thinking, oh, this can't be good. But they're very, very happy to, to, to get the signature and. Well, speaking, I, I speaking of chemical. Stuff, way back in the day, I went and bought a ton of Sailor Moon stuff because I found this store and it had all this Sailor Moon stuff. So the coolest thing, and it wasn't something a fan gave me, was remember Alpha Getty? Remember like yeah, Spaghetti O's course, those little cans? So yeah, I have a Sailor Moon one upstairs. So I have two boys. I had a 10 year old and then a 14 year old. So they want me to open it because there's a show on tv where they try things from the 50s and they're constantly oh yeah, yeah i don't know what the show is but either way the boys want to youtube this this they're like okay mom but you have to eat it it's from like 91 <laughs> let's go don't do it katie don't do it <laughs> i know it's here they pressure me yeah what's the expiration date on that they can't um Exactly. There's no expiration date. That's I think nothing. if you look at botulism, that's what that can would look like. <laughs> They've got them in the deep and bunker for sure. Uh, I've, 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 I've signed more than my share of, of, of speaking of chemical body parts, of, of Artemis tattoos on various uh, um, uh, yes. people's bodies. I'm sure you've all done tattoos of your of your characters on on fans, or not done them, but have seen them. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, women with tattoos in different places. That's been odd and awkward, but uh, you know that's a commitment. Getting a tattoo of uh, of your character it shows the love they have for the characters and how much it affected them. Oh, really? Realistically, oh. I you know, I haven't signed weird places, although I've been quite willing to. But what has happened is I am. Um, <laughs> No, sorry, I just wanted to get wrong going. Okay, um, uh, no, um, but what I've had several times is uh, to record, uh, get your act together for somebody's boyfriend, girlfriend, or for themselves. There was one woman who was trying to write a novel and she said, I really need you to help me write this. And so I had to record a little bit, so now, now get your act together. And, uh, <laughs> um, so that, that's what I've done, but no, I haven't done any unusual tattoos. Sorry. Now, um, Jill, I'm just gonna say, before we go on, that every time you talk, you go like this. I know, because that's the sort of guy I am. Yeah, and we're losing it. I've been, I've been scratching my foot, sorry. Yeah, stay you, in it in looks position. like you're scratching your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I actually am, because cats can. <laughs> Musical chart underscore asks, when comparing Sailor Moon to current shows and to kids, uh, what aspects of the show do you think that current shows should emulate more of, i.e. gender inclusion or female-centered storylines or... Yes. Yes. Right there, the business with having females in a show is it's so it's so unbelievable as as voice actors when we go in for an audition what they do is they lay out what they call the sides 
and the sides are the 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 lines that you're going to be reading for the audition only and it, you know just like a page or two pages and and you you get to pick which sides you want to do so there's a whole bunch of different characters often there'll be like 20 characters all laid out and you go okay this one's good for me this one's good for me this one's good for me when we go to auditions as women if there's 20 characters out there there is probably going to be two female parts Mm. possibly three and one of those that we can audition for is a little boy it is so lopsided the number of parts for women as opposed to men and it doesn't make sense whatsoever this show sailor moon was so humongous has such a just such an incredible following and yet it had five five main women on it and you know Follow it, man. It worked. It worked. People want to know the stories behind women. They want to know that mm -hmm. they're human beings as well. Well, and, and gender women. inclusion, right? Gender inclusion yeah. is also super important. And Sailor Moon was such a, a, mm. a hero in that regard, putting forward uh, all kinds like non-binary and, 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 and characters from the LGBTQ plus communities. I think that's so important and to keep building those characters and hiring actors who are women to play women roles and non-binary characters to play non-binary roles or actors rather non-binary actors and to to keep that uh, casting to be as inclusive as possible as well it was light years uh, ahead of time uh you know uh, to do that the way they did which was awesome because you know as we see now yeah that's the way it should be and also i must add i think there should be more people in tuxedos just in general <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's an all around that. thing, though. That's just the classiness of the. That's just the classic. Yeah, but, yeah, absolutely. But, but it, it, even now, I mean, the, uh, for me, the answer is female empowerment and and inclusion. And and even now, there's not shows uh, that even uh, come close to the bar that Sailor Moon uh, made. I mean, there's two male leads, um, Tuxedo Mask and Artemis, in the whole uh, series. Everybody else was women, you know, for the most part. And that's uh, that's fa uh, fantastic. And that's uh, that doesn't happen these days. That hasn't happened in 30 years. So well, we it, went it, backwards it, from there. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. We moved that little one step forward, and then we went right back. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is that the uh, the characters themselves, this is what it was so astonishing the first when we all saw those scripts first of all, and then we saw the, the Japanese dub in Japanese. We didn't understand uh, what was being said, but we sure understood that those looked like real people up there. They weren't all prissy and pretty with little frilly aprons and being all demure and that sort of thing. You know, the big wide faces and, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It, it finally portrayed female beings as real and re and well-rounded, not just uh, some sort of <clears throat> kooky image that was so boxed in. And all the animation that preceded it, most of it, was this boxed in little version of this pretty little female, et cetera, et cetera. And so suddenly uh, you've got all these different, and that was another thing that was terrific. Each one of the friends had a different kind of character and personality trait that defined them. So every single girl or guy, everybody watching that show was able to relate to different people in the mm -hmm. show based on how that person represented the person, the little girl or little boy watching or the teenager watching. Let's be frank, a lot of older kids watched it too and mm -hmm. in their 20s at the time, even though it was supposedly for kids because it was on, you know, early in the day. So it, it was groundbreaking. It compared to what went before, and as Linda said, it's like everything's kind of sliding back into the same old, same old again. I don't know. Right? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, Barbara, I wanted to touch on that a little bit more. Um, you know, Sailor Neptune and Sailor Uranus, their their relationship is kind of a lot of LGBTQ plus community is very. It was kind of what gave them the push to be comfortable who they were and kind of. You know, step out. It's the feedback that I get from people who watched it when they were little going, I saw my um, myself reflected in those characters from a young age. And so sometimes that was my only safe place. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's still their only safe place to go, um, you know, I, I can um, stand in my power, in myself, in my love and who I love. And um, and that's something that's that's thought of as and represented in a positive way. And yes, so that's such a moving part of knowing that this character touched specifically that community um, right from a very young age and continues to do so now. So I think that's really important for 
a representation of all different kinds of identities, whether it's, you know, people of color, whether it's people from different gender communities or social identity communities. Um, and, you know, it's a sad thing if we're saying this one show did this, and successfully did it and touched so many people for so long. And yet we don't take that as a cue to the material we're producing now. I, I don't understand that. So um, it's interesting to see how things like that affect and do, don't affect and how they stick and how they permeate, how they, whether they don't or not, you know, it's, um, but I think it's very cool um, to see that kind of stuff, you know, happen with people who are fans of shows. Because you know, a lot of people who watch shows like this, you know, it's what they had growing up. It's what they grabbed onto. It's um, their, their moral compass, if you will. Um, and so it's really cool to have shows like this and shows like Power Rangers growing up for me anyway, to have these characters to kind of like look up to, you know? Um, so, uh, Toby being, being the guy in the, in the, the gang of powerful women, yeah. if, if, if you could pick one of the sailor squad to be, <laughs> which one would you power wise, which one, which would oh, you, wow. yeah, uh, well, which which so one weird. was you? Linda, Linda's head just got a little bigger <laughs> and more foreboding. Um, <laughs> you know, come on, it's called Sailor Moon, but you know, there's also a red planet. I'm just joking. <laughs> what, what do you say? Yeah, you can't, yeah. Ian, you can't hang me like this, man. I love you. I, uh, I mean, I, people want to know. You know, well, fr from me, I think. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take the political fence on this one and say they all had their own strengths. You are so <laughs> cheap right now. Wow. Yep. You, yep. you gotta pick one. You gotta what? pick one. You know oh, where I, I live. We're going for some Frost Nixon <laughs> level <laughs> journalism <laughs> here, Toby. That, that. <laughs> well, I think originally people would say Mars, but later in this series, they'd say Moon. Speaking of Mars, uh, Katie, you, you are the second person to join the Sailor Squad, the first edition. That's kind of like actually a big thing in, in these types of shows is the, the first additional member to the team. Um, how does that feel to be that in the history of these characters? It feels pretty good. I mean, at the time, I just assumed that Moon and Mars were besties and it was even though we were fighting all the time and <laughs> there was all of this conflict, we were best friends. And then later when Comic-Con started, there was a lot of negative feelings towards <laughs> Mars. <laughs> Why is she so mean? Why were you so mean? So I never saw it like that because I have a sister and we're best friends in real life. And so with Moon and Mars, I just thought, yeah, no, it's perfect because that's what relationships are. You call each other out on stuff. And so being the second person in, I, it didn't, you know, it was, it was exactly how it should, should have been in my opinion. Very, very cool. So Linda, being the first one in, I suppose, uh, as Sailor Moon and being kind of the leader of the team, the namesake of the show. Um, oh, I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you for pointing that out. Oh, of course. Shameless. Of course. And I know. Um, <laughs> We're just shaking heads. <laughs> what, would, what would you say that your favorite arc of your character was in the sense of getting to grow as a character more? Mm. Oh, those are hard questions. Those are, I'll tell you why that's a really hard question. Because when we did the show, we didn't get the scripts. So we were literally doing the lines that we had to do. And we had sometimes no clue whatsoever uh, what was going on, quite frankly, in a lot of the episodes. Most so, of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it just depended on how many lines you have. So that's that's a very difficult question for me to answer. I'm not gonna lie. I loved the Uranus and Neptune stuff. I loved that. I, I just, I had fun with it and it was it was sort of a crazy time as well. So can I go with that? No, um, you can't, go ahead. No, go we have to do this over, it takes two. <laughs> We're gonna do a mulligan. So uh, Ron, one of the, almost the, I don't wanna say Obi-Wan's, of the show, you know, in the, the mentor capacity, you know, because I feel like Luna and Artemis are very much the, the mentors, it, it, even if at times they are, they playfully, trying to think of the right word, but like, um, you know, spats. How, hmm? they have spots. Yes, there you go. They have spots. <laughs> uh -oh. But, um, you know, what, what would be your favorite aspect of getting to kind of be that role to these characters? Uh, favorite aspect to be that role to these characters. You know, like I, kind of the 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 guide, one of the guides, essentially. Well, it, it, you know what I? Um, there's so much uh, energy and, and and craziness with the Sailor Scouts going wow, 
all over the place and Luna drives me crazy. And uh, so I've, I've always felt that Artemis was kind of like a, a bit of the voice of reason. You know, he was the calm, uh, collected uh, one. The, you know, uh, when the world was going crazy around me, it was like, you know, get off my back, Luna. Like, you know, chill. He was kind of the chill cat. And, uh, you know, as, as Linda said, as, as we've said, we, we got the scripts like that kind of when we walked into the studio and we were doing it on Rhythmal Band, so we we're reading the line. So we didn't have a lot of, you know, interpretation into the, the scripts ahead of time or anything like that. So it wasn't until after the fact that you could really see your character development in retrospect. It's kind of weird. Uh, but um, Artemis, uh, yeah, he didn't lose it too much, you know, maybe in one or two episodes, but he was kind of the voice of reason. And that was fine with me because uh, a lot of the craziness and energy uh, abounded uh, with the other characters. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So Susan, yeah. um, actually picking back up on something you said earlier, kind of about how each of them had their own sort of thing and they're like uh you know kind of traits that defined who they were right. um a lot of people would say that sailor jupiter was kind of like the muscle of the team you know the the one who would come in and basically kind of go all right let's do this um how does it feel to be that in relation to the rest of the team to to, to be muscle i, I love well, being muscle that I, that's the first time that i've ever heard that uh description of of her i've heard feisty tomboy but i like muscle Oh, that's good. So, you know, it the one of the things that when you look back on it and you look back at, at especially if you see photographs of the way we used to look in the day, they basically cast us so that we I guess hopefully we performed oh, uh, pretty well, but mostly they cast us because we resembled in a certain way the character we were playing. Katie had long dark, dark hair down to God knows where. She just, it, it, when she walked in, I went, oh, I bet she's playing Sailor Mars. And of course she was. And I used to have brown hair and a long ponytail. And the only thing I don't have is the height. So when you talk about uh, muscle and strength, um, I guess that was something that I, uh, that I would, I possessed innately, uh, but I didn't know it. And so it comes across in my voice without me even knowing it. So it, in a way, it was it kind of taught me something that I wasn't aware of. I'd always equated that strength and feistiness um, to little boy characters that I played. And this is the first time that I actually got to use it in, in a, someone of the female gender. And it felt so right. And, oh, look at me, I'm strong. I'm opinionated. I'm allowed to get angry. Those shots of her, you know, playing pinball. This thing is rigged. I mean, it's just, it was just so amazing. We never saw that before. And it gave people permission to be themselves. So you got a little, you know, you got a little testy. You, you, you just get it out and then you apologize or you make up and whatever. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry. I strayed completely off topic there. But you know what <laughs> no. happens. No, that was great. So, that was absolutely great. Uh, Jill. Got yeah. something, got a question for you. Um, you know, get, getting to be the person who basically brings, you know, Sailor Moon into the larger world of the mythos of these characters, um, you, you, you know, like, as you know, as you guys have said, you got the scripts as they came in, but to what would be your favorite thing that you got to impart onto Sailor Moon, whether it be a power or a lesson or anything in that ilk? Well, first of all, I have to sort of contradict a few things that Ron said, because um, um, I'm sorry, this but many fans, with. many fans have told me that I am the voice of reason. Uh. So let's just clarify that. Okay, um, I think that I think that I that my character, I think Luna, found Sailor Moon irritating because she was so shallow sometimes. And I think I was always trying to get her back to talking about important things like saving the universe, where she was, you know, whatever, <laughs> boyfriend, and top, whatever. But I just mean, so I think that I was always rather unlike myself, who I'm stuck in the shallow bit, but I, I think she was always trying to center her. I think, I think actually, she probably said seen a lot, and I think she probably did cat yoga. <laughs> um, I think, um, yes, I, dog. I think that's. <laughs> Well, yes, a lot of that. I think what she brought was, um, as I said, this this center and knowledge. Again, Artemis didn't know very much. Um, knowledge and um, the, one of the things that worried me about the whole thing was finding out when I got him one day that I'd had a kitten. Nobody had told me I was about to have a kitten. 
And here I am. And I said, well, who sired the kitten? And they said, Artemis. I said, you must be joking. Because we've had no... Be very I careful, said, Jill. I said it should be Hercules, the one who chased me last week. And they said, no. And I said, well, I think we should have at least, you know, brought them together just a bit. Because, I mean, we're very distant. I mean, we obviously respect each other, but there's a certain distance. Um, anyway, be that as it may. Yes, I think that Luna is the center of the show, actually. And that's also been said to me by fans. And you have to understand that when someone like Jill says, who sired that? And then I think Ron and Jill together. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh, I have, I have nightmares too. Don't worry, Linda. <laughs> See, so <laughs> what's interesting as, as, we're, as, we're, sorry, as we're going around and everyone's talking about their characters, what's interesting is that um, uh, these characters, the, the, the female characters, were not cookie cutter, uh, cookie cut out characters all the same. And I've been at uh, you know, many cons with these uh, uh, wonderful women and fans have been coming up to each one crying uncontrollably because they relate to Sailor Jupiter and what she means. They relate to, to Katie and Sailor Mars. They relate to Sailor Moon. And, um, you know, it's it, it's so wonderful that uh, so many people relate to us, just not as an entire show. But, you know, Luna has her fans. Uh, Toby has his fans. We all uh, reached out to people in different aspects because of the uh, differentiations in the character. Oh, absolutely. Especially, you know, when it comes to, you know, when they're in their sailor outfit and their sailor kind of persona mm -hmm. and their actual non-sailor persona. They're very well-rounded characters that have aspects that reach across both, but then also aspects that kind of differ a little bit when they get a little more powerful. And I feel like that's it speaks a lot to human nature um, mm -hmm. and not just, yeah. you know, a cartoon show. It's very much a human, <clears throat> human element of stuff. And I guess that kind of leads to one of my next questions was, so you guys talked about the weirdest thing you've had to sign at cons. What would be your favorite experience that you've had at cons? You know, maybe not specifically with a person, but something that stands out to you over the years. It's really been something that you've held close to you after the fact. I know for me, one of my favorite things, which is also one of the worst things, it's a combo platter of the two. <laughs> um, I know. And it was, you know, a woman coming over to me and saying, and this was like one of my first cons that I ever did and saying, you don't understand. You don't understand what you mean to me, what this character means, what this show means to me. And she said, when I was watching it, I was in a very, very, very dark place and I didn't want to go on any longer and I didn't know what to do. And she said, because of this show, it brought me out of that. Wow. And it, it gave me something, it gave me something to relate to. It gave me friends to have, and it kept me alive. And then she turned, and this is my favorite fan moment. And she said, I'd like you to meet my daughter. And of course she's dressed up and I'm just like, ah! and the mother's ah! and the kids looking at me like, they're crazy, they're crazy. But it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. And so for that, that is like that type of fan. And, and every single Comic-Con that I, we ever go to, every single Comic-Con, bar none, there is always someone, there's always more than one person who comes with the same type of story. And it just, it touches my heart. And it is, it's just, it's just an incredible, incredible moment. I really I think, think that that is exactly what I would have said too. I mean, I really don't think you'll ever with any other show, it doesn't matter how successful it is or who's attached to it or whatever's happening, nothing in our lives will have touched the amount of people and have the stories that the pe that our fans watching Sailor Moon have. Never, never again. This is like a, the special, this is the moment because of exactly that moment. And I remember that, Linda. Mm. it's an emotional bond that somehow that we have mm. it, it's 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 so not what I expected mm -hmm. that it would be so emotional and and it's and also sometimes to see a guy just just shaking with emotion and and tearing up and unable even to, to actually say anything they are just so caught up in well I know I have this effect on me but I just mean just so caught up in in their their memories uh that they, they can't even express, but you can tell from their face how they're feeling. And it's, it's, it's amazing to feel you could possibly have had this effect on people or that the show could. I wanted to bring up another point, by the way, that the person who wrote this originally created it, was she not a teenager at the time or very young anyway? And it would yeah. seem to me that she, in a way, 
got the way the girls were thinking because she was so young. Um, she, I think, yeah, I think. Ian, right. do you know? Do you know much about the creator? I will be honest. I do not. I think she was in her like early twenties or oh, mid twenties. I, I saw some footage. Yeah. Yes, yeah, very young. Only we yeah. had something like Google to look it up. No, the Wikipedia oh, article that I just pulled up right in front oh, of me. Yeah. It's not really in front of me right now. Um, you know, I think one of the other things too is that that uh, people respond, and that was what is so great about being able to go to Comic Cons and meet everybody in person, is that people respond. You don't realize the effect that a voice has on you when you're a little kid. I mean, yeah. I remember being a little kid and that there were certain voices on TV that I recognized instantly. And if I heard that voice when I was an adult, I would go crazy mm -hmm. with excitement. Mm -hmm. So you don't, uh, you as the actor don't realize it. So there you are at a Comic-Con and you're just saying, hi, how's it going? And they hear and they hear that voice that they've heard all throughout their childhood and something goes zing in their hearts and you can see it happening and the, the 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 shaking and the quivering and of course i mean those days you know where you could lean forward and say it's okay everything's great hold on to their hands everything's great it's good it's good it's so nice to to meet you and and that's what worries me is with this whole what's going on now is that that was the best part of being at a Comic-Con, was being able to reach out if somebody was willing to to be touched and hugged we were up for it. I mean, that's kind of what we were known for. Yeah. And to think that that, <clears throat> that relationship might be in jeopardy to, to a certain extent. I mean, you can still, you can still have- yeah, we, might, we might not be able to hug and kiss or whatever anymore, but in you know, people that we don't know in big groups, but- Kissing, no. <laughs> still that, 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 well, you know what I mean, love or whatever, you know, but certainly <laughs> hugging, right? I don't think, I think that era is probably over um because of what happened and the triggers it will you know you know you have to be consistent so it's probably going to be triggering for a lot of people but yeah. that being said i didn't spend a lot of time hugging people and i haven't gone to as many comic cons as the rest of you mm -hmm. but i can absolutely key into the way it felt to connect with the energy that those fans brought. Um, it's so profound and it's so moving. And after I would do a, a Comic-Con day, of course it's, you know, it's tiring because it's a lot of energy and you're, you're out there and you're, um, you're not on, but you're, you're on in a certain way in terms of having your, the switches on in terms of being open to that connection. But I would come away from those days completely high on life and love and and that's i've never had that experience with anything else so i i totally agree with all of you well i think with uh, special moments you know and talking about the multi-generational thing um much like all of us who've had you know interactions with fans the one of the ones that sticks out to me that i and i've talked about this before but it's a really interesting thing it was really early on my agent uh, had uh, messaged me uh, a get phone call because it's like back in pager days. And he was like, hey, I want you to come to the agency because we have some fan mail. And I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, we, we you know, selected some stuff you want to go through. And and we've also, uh, we've uh, arranged for you to make a telephone call to this eight-year-old girl, Diana Tolan, for her birthday. Her mom's kind of hoping you could do it at the agency. So I did that thinking, oh, this is kind of cool. So I said, hey, you know, hi, Diana, it's Tuxedo Mask calling, blah, blah, blah. Did, did the whole bit and had a great time. And it was only, I think it was in 2014, we were all at LA Anime, Anime Expo in Los Angeles. And uh, I was talking to somebody and then she, this girl turned to me, she goes, wait a second, you know my friend. I said, Who, who's your friend? She goes, you probably won't remember this, but her name is Diana Tolan. I'm like, oh my gosh, she was like my first super fan. She goes, she's here now. So we actually made arrangements and we met in one of the hotel lobbies and I got to cheers her upcoming uh, marriage with her uh, oh. to be. Oh. And here's a girl I talked to at age eight and now oh. she's, you know, probably 28 now. And, oh. uh, and she got to give me a big hug and said that, you know, she's finally getting to meet tuxedo mask. And it was just, but it, like you see the, it, like the, the, the generations, we see them walk up to talk to us and there's, you know, the grandmother won't usually admit to it, but I mean, the daughter watched the show, but the grandmother also paid a, a good attention to it as well. So, oh yeah, uh, so. yeah. 
Absolutely. As someone, I'm, I'm turning 31 in June, and as someone who's in that age group, I can totally tell you my grandparents won't say they watched the stuff I watched, but they watched the stuff I watched. <laughs> yeah. They were the ones taking me to the things and going to the movies and watching the shows with me and all that jazz. So, you know, it's it's interesting. And to, to uh, kick you back on your, the con stuff and the change of things, uh, obviously things will be different moving forward, but you got to also think after the Black Plague was the Renaissance. So, you Ooh. know, Nice. That That's comes a good way. Positive. Yeah, that positive. Yeah. You gotta think about it that way. Everybody's gonna start to play cello, right? <laughs> exactly. You're gonna go. It's gonna be a lot classier going to cons now. There's just gonna be quartets everywhere. Quartets and, everywhere. Yeah. I, 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 quartets. I, 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 I yeah. hadn't thought about the whole hug thing, but that's so true. I mean, uh, Sailor Moon really evokes the emotional kind of um, uh, content out of people. And, it's, you know, somehow it's, it's not Bugs Bunny or the Flintstones. It, it kind of uh, hit people. And at, at, at our tables, I don't know about everyone else. I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, so much for autographs, hugs are free. I used to always have hugs are free. And I think a few of you others uh, had that too. And signing was 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 half the fun but but then we would always walk around the table and, and give hugs and that was so much part of it mm -hmm. and you're right uh we might not be able to do that in the future which is no. so sad well you know we'll, we'll see how things pan out with every i know it's, it's it's nice to hear that the cons are starting to pick up again you know and once everyone's vaccinated and mm -hmm. all that jazz and we'll see what the world's like come early next year end of this year um but uh i i, I was actually wondering do you need do you want more crazy stories from our fans because we've had a lot of we've had a lot of fun with our fans by all means that. by, by all means i mean we've sort of been serious on this part but i mean we have got stories where they i, I wish every single con we're at i'm like remember this don't let me forget <laughs> this moment because this is too good one of them i remember very clearly i, I think we were in niagara falls and Toby had gone to the washroom and this girl <laughs> comes over, she's wearing duct tape. Oh yes. On her yeah. nipples basically. Mm -hmm. And that's just about all she's wearing. She's wearing barely any, like a strip of duct tape. And then like a little strip of something else. She is just like, you're not wearing any clothes. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, Sarah Lee, oh my God, you don't understand, you don't understand, this is my whole life, I love this so much, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, my favorite was Tuxedo Mask, I said, well, <laughs> lucky day, because he's here, she's like, no, no, he's not here, he's not here, and I said, oh yeah, and he's going to want to meet you, for sure. Oh. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's going to love this, he's going to love this, and I was like, yeah, he's going to love that, for sure. So Toby comes back to the bathroom, and I'm like, somebody's here to meet you <laughs> and she says i just want to give him a big hug I'm, she just wants to give you a big hug and here she is and it's just like, oh i'm married oh god oh god. Nice if it wasn't you. for my pesky three children you know <laughs> <laughs> that whole committed relationship thing you know uh, and i must add this light is really red all of a sudden i don't know uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fantastic yeah, that do you remember the first time we, we we had that thing at the university, one of the first signings and everything was in, in Ottawa. Is that right? You and and me? The auditorium. And I remember that we said, are there any questions or something? And somebody said, can I come and hug Tuxedo? <laughs> and you said, oh, yeah, sure. And then they started lining up and coming. <laughs> And that was the first time people that I remember people specifically asked. You know, was, did, did we take the train there? Was that? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a long time ago. Oh, I know. I think we took the train to Ottawa, right? For that. I also thought it was the one. I know, but I always think it was one in Toronto. The, 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 that very early one. At, the, oh, the, the, at University of Toronto. Is that the and University? And they were all lined up around the corner, and yeah. uh, and Roland said that if they, find, if they brought a uh, a poster, then then they bring Sailor Moon back. I remember that clearly. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and and then we couldn't believe that it was two hours of signing because there were so many people, and I remember my wrist going and thinking that's why famous people write so badly because they have to do it so often um, anyway or they're all secretly doctors i don't know <laughs> i recall you also having pictures taken with people and and uh, um jill and licking them Yes, I do remember licking. Yes, Joe used to lick people. That is definitely a not post-COVID. No, 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 no. I was pretending to lick them because I was a cat. And I jumped up on the table because I'm a cat. 
Thank you. And I used to mark my territory at the table, but I don't do that anymore. You know, that's oh, a story God. fans want yeah. to hear more about. That's, that's a story. <laughs> Definitely do want to mark his territory. Oh, God. Uh, I was on catnip. What do you want? Okay. Woo! Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, that's fantastic. So I guess, I guess, um, you know, you guys are all so friendly with each other. It's great to see that, uh, you know, amongst the cast. Uh, if if you could pick, I guess I kind of already asked you this, Toby, a little bit about being one of the Sailor Squad, but for everybody else, not just Sailor Squad, who, and you, Toby, what character would you be on the show if you couldn't be who you were? Oh, oh. I think, I mean, I would always be Mars because she really is similar to me, but I would definitely be Sailor Jupiter. Jupes is, you know, she's athletic. She likes baking. I like eating baked goods. <laughs> I don't bake, but I eat a lot of cookies. <laughs> I'll bake, but yeah, I she eat. she's really athletic. And so yeah, and that's where I would have had. I think I'd like to be Tuxedo Mask because I just have to show up at the end late and not have to do any fighting. <laughs> and put on a nice hat yeah Good. you did always seem to show up at that right moment just to throw the rose and then go part your one line of wisdom and go i'm out yeah i have done something <laughs> i'm here guys i want to be when i became a girl when when say when luna turned into the most beautiful of the girls with the longest legs Unfortunately, she was wearing yellow. I can't wear yellow, but anyway, she, um, and she was gorgeous. And that's because Luna fell in love with this young student. And it was uh, some of the best, oh, actually, some of the profiles of Luna, her profile is gorgeous. I mean, she's like wistful. It's a lovely, wistful look she has. And um, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I'd like to still be Luna, but as this beautiful girl, wistful girl. What did she sound like? I don't think she spoke. Mm. I don't remember her ever speaking. That's a change. <laughs> No, no, possibly. I mean, no, I'm known for being very deep. You know, we've been asked, the, or I've been asked this question, which Sailor Scout would I be? But I've, it's never been opened up to the entire cast. So um, I have certain Sailor Scouts that I would be, but I think I'd like to be Tuxedo Mask. It'd be nice to be the suave, debonair Tuxedo Mask for a change. Uh, <laughs> Funny, because I was going to say I wanted to be the cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll trade you. Well, what liquors? <laughs> what? What's like? Did you say that I won't, I won't repeat what I thought you said? What? I said join me. No, not join you. Me. Oh, no, oh. Luna. <laughs> I would, oh. I, you know, it, uh, upon reflection, I always used to think that I wanted to be one of the villains because I don't usually mm -hmm. get to play villains very often. But I just, when you asked that question, I was just going through, you know, basically the wardrobes. And um, <laughs> that's what really counts in life. And yes. I, in you know work. what, I, I, I wouldn't mind doing a trade with Mars. I, I, you know, those shoes, excuse yeah. me, excellent. I mean, I love Jupe's boots, hello. Yeah. And that's another thing that I'm going to miss so much. I want to go back to Comic-Cons because that was my favorite thing. What I would always look and see the person who was cosplaying Jupiter. I would say, oh. I've got to see your boots. Mm. Come on, I've got to see yeah. your boots. Because to be people, it's really hard to find green boots, you know, trust me. So Mars had these beautiful, just these little kind of sexy red kitten pumps or whatever they're called. And that hair. Yeah, I would be. And the temper. You see, yeah. they actually are similar in that way, right? The yeah. temper thing, kind of out of control. Anger management issues. Maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, I would. But it's so funny. I can't listen to any of the characters and imagine myself doing them because they're so embedded in my mind the way they are. Mm -hmm. They're so perfect. I, I, I. I would feel, I couldn't, I couldn't. Isn't that funny? No, absolutely, I get it. You you know, everyone in the cast, you, you hear, you're one of those voices that you hear and you instantly, you know, your brain goes, oh, that's this character, Yeah. you know, across yeah. the whole cast. And it's, exactly. it's definitely one of those, the voice matches the iconicism of the character, I think. Iconicism, that's a great word. I have a thesaurus in the other room. I use it all the time. <laughs> um, iconicism. I'll be wow. saying that. For the whole week, I'll be oh, saying, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's true though. Yeah. Whenever I just walk into the room. No, it's, it's very you, true. For breakfast. It's like, I, Iconicism. I don't know if it's, it's something you could eat, but. I know, I was trying to think of how I could. <laughs> we, I mean, Wheaties, not gonna do that. you know, they're pretty oh. iconic. It's not going to happen at breakfast. Well, no, because it really does speak to the work that every one of you did that, that, you know, so many people, when they think of these characters, they think of what you guys did, you know? Um, well, and, and, and just from the other side the of it, as, as the actor performing those characters, and because we've been thinking about them in the aftermath for so many years, 
I literally, I would, this whole time I didn't answer because I was like, I, don't, I can't imagine playing anyone else but Sailor Neptune because I've just been so invested <laughs> in her, um, not just the initial creation, but uh, the, the dubbed creation, but in the in the the legacy that's continued on after that. So I love all you characters, all those wonderful characters, and sure it would be fun to embody those. But but I I I think there's also that thing about when you inhabit a character that becomes iconic within yourself or for your own career, it's hard to go like to have a wishful thinking of another character. And I've had wishful thinkings for other characters, but not in this case. So there you go. But it's, it's, I think, why I can't bring myself to watch the, the new one. I don't mm. want to hear another Luna. Mm. I don't want, I, I, and I, I know it's very cowardly, hmm. but I can't. can't well, you know what, though, but the, a lot of fans feel, feel the same way. And it's, it's not even just your guys' show. It shows very much like this that <laughs> permeate in the, you know, the strata of the culture. Um, you know, you have people who grew up on the original Ninja Turtles or the original Power Rangers, and yes, they're still around, but to them, those are, that's the characters to them, you know, um, like I said, I'm 30, and anytime I see Jason David Frank in a con, I'm like, oh my god, it's a Green Ranger, you know, and and so, you know, I know, I know as someone who, who holds your guys' show in that sort of regard, there's so many people like that. So many people out there like that. And mm -hmm. um, I guess my next question is for again, for all of you, you know, what do you hope the audience does continue to take away from the show? Um, especially in, in the modern sense that it is a show that did come out in the early nineties, but still very much works, you know, nowadays with its themes and its characters. And, and, you know, what do you guys hope that the new generation of people who are, you know, picking it up, take away from it? Well, to be frank, I really hope that the original version is let out uh, and not uh, whitewashed, to be honest. That's if I was to speak frankly. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I know that you know this is this was the original you know dub, and I know that there are other interests involved, and I totally understand that. But I would really like uh, a, a fair footing to to preserve this as a historical document as well. That's that would be my hope because I think it was such an important show for the time, and we were the voices of that, and I don't think it should be uh, stolen from us. Mm. Wow. Yes. Wow, well, there. Toby. Yeah. Fun. And now I'm not allowed to go to the state. <laughs> I like that. No, I honestly I think that's we a great must answer. Go us. No. I think that's a great answer. I mean, realistically, you know, a lot of fans feel the same way. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of them are very happy to hear you say that because you know, there's there are some people who are like, oh, you know, the new ones are but no, 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 you guys are the ones that you know are in the hearts of the people who are gonna be watching this and want to meet you at the cons and are looking forward to those moments to happen again. Um, you know. And not think that I don't. I don't think that there shouldn't be iterations. I think that's fine. But I, I think that 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 the original document should be able to let live is what yeah. I what I say mm. without well, question. But also, yeah. I think we were all pretty happy that they were coming back anyway. They're just bringing back Sailor Moon in general because it needed to come back, and it needed to because if it just didn't come back at all, then it wouldn't have reached. The new fans and the new and Sailor Moon is it's important and the friendships are awesome and the yep. relationships are honest and and so the fans if they wanted more yeah the fans, fans wanted more and they, they deserve more so yeah bring it and truth be told we actually had had the good uh, grace to meet a lot of the new uh, voice cast and they're lovely people yes. so yeah I, I, yes. so I don't wish any ill, Ill will on them because oh. they're actually friends of ours yeah. It's, yeah it's kind of a neat they're like distant cousins it's cool um but yeah yeah it was you know that's that's uh, i think that's the best way to say it oh yeah i mean you can you can say it's something akin to almost like a in, in a musical sense you know like for me growing up you know, joseph is missing technical to dream coat that was something that came out when i was younger and donny osmond was my joseph but it doesn't mean that that can't stand uh -huh. beyond him even though to me he's always the original joseph you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's especially with a franchise like sailor moon that is starting to have a resurgence and is starting to you know come back mm -hmm. And well, you asked about what we hope audiences will take away. And one of the things, there's a couple of qualities that, that, um, are, that are emblematic of Sailor Moon. One of them, which I think is really key, is that the scouts are, their mission is to defend good. And the idea of, of protecting and preserving and amplifying good as opposed to going out and killing people or you know war and taking over uh you know wh whatever this idea that you're def 
defending good and right, I think that's a wonderful takeaway. And I know that there was um, some episodes that, that I voiced where um, Sailor Neptune talks about uh, the importance of a good and pure heart. And that's what she loves about uh, Uranus is that she has a good and pure heart. And again, just those kinds of takeaways that the writers embedded there um, from the very beginning, I think that those are beautiful takeaways for the show. Mm. That's, yeah, that's a fantastic answer. I think um, people love hearing stuff like that. You know, it's it it reaffirms stuff that they find in it, you know? Um, so I got, okay, this one's controversial question. Uh oh. Pluto, planet, not a planet, because it's one of the <laughs> sailor squads. So, you know, planets. Cute little planet. I'm going to give her a cute little planet. Planet, planet. Planet. Little planet. planet. Golden buzzer, planet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with you guys on that all right i'm with you guys on that all right and then uh so out of all of the cool gadgets weapons pieces of your outfits that you got to throw at people with power um <laughs> what's your favorite my flea collar <laughs> my oven mitts <laughs> mm, i love my tiara i love my tiara it's awesome trident mm. Trident's cool. Trident's, Trident's cool. cool. I like the flame sniper. Just saying. I Toby's mean, pointing to his rose. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, it's iconic. It was my only weapon, except for my good looks <laughs> in the show. Well, I always wanted. I always wanted to know how he got the the rose to stick into the cement. You know, it's always <laughs> realistically really... tipped. It's it's like mm. a Tony Stark thing. So you, you have like a weaponer for your roses, essentially. Yeah. You know, you yes. have the lead tipped rose, and you have a he sharpens them on the pleats of his pants. <laughs> so that, that's where you are most of the episode. You're standing behind the window, just kind of sharpening. Oh, my time's going to come. I'm going to hop in right now. It's going to sharpen it perfectly. I, I, like, I didn't have any weapons except my claws and Those are good. enormous wisdom. Oh. But what yes. I liked best was being splatted, actually. I like, which isn't a weapon at all, but I liked, I liked all the noises one had to find for the amazing grimaces and whatever when, when Luna was fighting for her life and for good and the girls. And, and no, that, that actually, I, that's, a, that's a very good question. Actually, that's something that pops a good question in my head. What is the most ridiculous thing you ever had to record as your character? Every single noise that came out of their mouth. 90% <laughs> mm -hmm. of what we did were just no reactions. Yeah. 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 I've actually, Linda and I, oh, everybody froze. Oh, okay. So Linda and I had to do raspberries all the time to one another. And we, you can't spit on a mic. So you're sort of. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did, Linda. Got me right in the eye. Yeah, I did. Oh, those were the days, right? Mm. So you they, they had you guys days? record together? Then? Spit. What? Very rarely did we get to record together. Only if we had like a big scene, a good chunk of, of lines together. Then yeah. Would... And that's tough. It's tough not having anybody to talk to. That, that's one of the things that made um, my relationship in the show unique because I am the only actor or one of the few actors who routinely recorded with someone else. So oh, I wow. was almost wow. always in the room with Sailor, yeah, we with Sarah together. doing Sailor Uranus. So I, I only realized afterwards that it was just us who got to do that, but it was so much fun to be in a booth with somebody else. Yeah, yeah I, think I, I think it was court ordered that I wasn't uh, supposed to be with anybody. <laughs> the restraining order. <laughs> Jill, didn't we do some of our scenes together, uh, the Artemis Luna scenes? But not much, because I hardly knew you before you hugged me. Why, huh? Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember our, <laughs> our fights and um, things, yeah. but you know, it, it, it was mainly, it wasn't an ensemble at all. It, it was a lot of solo work now that I think of it, yeah. It was very little. Um, and yeah. I remember uh, Diana, you know, again, you know, suddenly hit, not even knowing who was playing Diana. I'm sorry, I'm just obsessed with the fact that I had a kitten without realizing it. Oh. We, we had a kitten, darling. Well, I think I had it. <laughs> Well, I help. I think I, oh, I mean, well, yes, let's I, change topics. I, I, I Linda, I, Linda's getting uh, flashbacks. No, no, here. I did a Sheldon. I did a Sheldon. I did a Sheldon. I just produced. You know, whatever. Yes, um, anyway, we yes, digress. But, but no, we hardly did. I agree. And I think um, as actors, we how can you know how the other person's going to say their line? I mean, it doesn't make any sense because it's action reaction. You're constantly reacting to nothing. 
<clears throat> and we're just hoping or wondering what the other person is going to say. Plus, as Linda said, as we only just got the lines in front of us, and as Nicole's writing was hard to understand, it was difficult sometimes to know what the freaking words were because they would all be joined up together. Because it was literally oh. handwritten. Yeah, handwritten. Oh, handwritten. Really? Uh, on oh, the wrong record. hand and it, yeah and it's like doing karaoke it would come by and as soon as the word hit the line you had to say that word mm -hmm. second it did but it was all handwritten on this uh, yeah. rhythmo band what, what color, color draft draft band? Yeah. i was gonna say what color draft is that the, the purple draft oh we all had different uh, uh the lines were different colors for uh for different and then there's like six lines on top of each other it's come a long way now they yeah. do a much different process but that, so that, with that, with that being the process, did you guys get to do any ad living or get to play around a little bit? Or you can't anyways because it's yeah. dubbing, and they've yeah. already done the. You have to match them up. So there's yeah. a tiny little bit that you can do. Like Katie and I, we could do it. We could do our our fight scenes together because our mouths were just like, ah! and we would just be screaming. Yeah. So every now and then we would be able to just get in the booth together and do it, and that was fun. Yeah. I was like the wild bits with, with, but that would be animation. I always like the wild bits at the end when you do lots of giggles and bumps and all sorts of things like that. But I mean, you can't very, very much with this, as you said, because you're stuck with the lips. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what that's an, that's something that uh, that people don't realize. It's it's actually a lot more difficult to create a character if you're dubbing someone else's performance mm -hmm. rather than creating oh, the character from from scratch. Yeah, so, I mean, I go so far back that I re I'm remembering days when all animation was original animation. So you went in, you recorded yeah. your part at your own pace, use, mm -hmm. with, you know, it was your creation from your own mind and your own heart, and then they went away, and it took it away, and animated to your voice. Yeah. So you're la you have all that freedom and all that latitude. And then, now when you start dubbing, you are completely confined to the actors, whoever has done your part. You're, you're confi confined to that rhythm that's been established. So if in real life, if you were doing the part and you wanted to say, I think that's crazy. And the actor, if that's the line, and the actor has recorded it as, I think that's crazy. So you've got to make your performance mm -hmm. fit that slow mouse movement and from it's japanese, hard from japanese to english mm -hmm. right it's awesome. it's hard it's, it's such different. an unsung skill it, yeah. it always baffles me that people don't realize how how hard it is to be good at it well yeah. for the fa the, fa the fans who are watching that they don't know uh, 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 all the animation you see saturday mornings pixar disney uh prime time you lay the voice track first and they draw to it later yeah. so what we did was we did dubbing because it was in japanese uh originally and so we had to sync up to the mouth movement so it's yeah it's impossible to do a fabulous performance because you're as susan said you are syncing up to the original performance in a different language that's fascinating having to, to build the character within the character but also yeah. make it your own yeah it's, it's very fascinating very layered you have to it's draw so them how it all works. <laughs> you know there's a lot of iconicism going on <laughs> oh totally <laughs> that's the to five dollar word of the I day had to, i had to reincorporate it what can i do <laughs> i know we came in late but i guess millie vanilli made a career out of it <laughs> yes <laughs> vanilli I can't oh, believe really someone remembers Millie Vanilli. Boy, oh, that God. Was different. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. Yeah. How are you guys oh. doing? Was it fun? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it was yes. great. Yes. Welcome back. Yeah. No, Ian had great questions. Absolutely fantastic. It was wonderful. Thank you. Some of them were from the fans. I'm them, glad yeah. you guys had a good time. I'm sorry I'm the bearer of bad news, but this uh, panel has come to a close. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. I was going to just kick Linda out and let the rest of you stay. But, you know, <laughs> I might have to hear about it later. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you all for your time. Thank yes. you for joining us and all of your, your answers and your, your questions, Ian and the fans. Thank you guys so much. And seriously, we hope to be bringing all of you guys to a show in person. Awesome. Yes. awesome. Yes. Yay. City near you. So stay tuned. We hope that happens. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank, no, you, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Ben. Bye, everybody. Nice to meet you. See you next time. A la prochaine. A la prochaine. Et bonjour.